Welcome to our uh, getting started session this afternoon. And this is really designed for both the very new user, kind of how to create the philosophy here is that you can kind of create your own little microcosm so that you could test work. You can kind of experiment with what you're doing. What we're going to do, step number one, we're going to look at uh, creating a render engine because, of course, that's the point, right, is to be able to, to run some work. And then we're going to step back through the process to create the product, and then we'll look at adding some order data and an image uh, in order to be able to run that product. And, of course, we have a very robust help system. And I would encourage you as a new user to uh, really take advantage of the many different um, tools that we've made available for you to kind of get up to speed in different parts of DP2. But for today, we're going to take four steps. The first step is going to be to create that printer. And we're going to be using what's called the printer wizard. So from the order entry taskbar, we would go to categories. And just to reinforce kind of what I said the last time, um, you know, all of those different task groups are represented in the categories. We're going to go to printing. And I'm going to take the uh, go to printer setup. I'm going to set up a very simple kind of closed loop system so that I can test. Uh, and we often recommend doing this when you're new to the to DP2, especially if you're in an existing production environment, so that you have a place that you can work and practice um, or kind of answer questions for yourself without interfering with production. Um, I do have all of my other printers and other operations um, shut off right now. And I would actually recommend that um, you kind of work in that environment. I, I wouldn't recommend trying to do this in the middle of a busy production site without obviously talking to your production manager. So printer setup, and then use the setup wizard button right here. One of the benefits of doing it this way is that scripts and other things are automatically populated for you so that you don't have to worry about whether or not you got the right script in the right place. And that's a really important part of DP2 automation. I'm going to select disk printers because I'm simply going to be sending my test work to a folder on my desktop. So it's easy to go check and um, you know makes the cycle really quick and simple. So I, I'm going to just name the printer. You can see from the existing printers, I have some printers based on size, some printers based on output. I'm just going to call it for the purposes of this my test printer. Um, you might want to put your name on it, especially if you're in an environment, again, where you have a lot of other people. And I'm going to also, I'm just going to call this my test queue. I'm going to use the paper width of 12 inches, but it really should be, uh, in a case like this where I'm creating a test environment, it doesn't really matter. But if you were doing this uh, for an actual printer, obviously you would want that to be the maximum um, inches for the printer so that um, you can use different size papers, again, depending on what kind of printer you have. I'm going to choose the ICC um, output profile if you are using color management in your lab. That's going to help you to see the work on screen and more accurately predict what's coming out of the printer. Uh, and again, this in this particular case, I would be setting it up as it goes out to the printer because that's handled by the printer queue. I'm setting up both the printer queue and the printer at the same time. So the resolution by default is 400 in DP2. Um, we actually are going to set it in the product, which is where DP2 will look for it first. But if there's no output resolution specified in the product itself or in the queue, it's going to be specified in the printer so that you have some fail safes. And there are reasons for doing either one, but the precedence goes to um, the product, as you'll see in a minute. So the image folder is where I want those images to go. And as I said, for me, I simply created a folder or two on my desktop. And um, I would recommend doing something that's local so that you don't have to wait, you don't have to worry about network traffic and so on. It becomes a nice closed environment for you to work at, work within. So I'm going to go next. We have the four different file, file formats that you can do here. I'm going to leave it at JPEG. Um, and again, each lab, these are kinds of things that you want to talk to your production manager about or think about if you're starting up in DP2 for the first time, um, you know, because the different file formats have different attributes and you want to kind of make yourself familiar with those. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So now I have a printer. So just below the printer setup button is the render engine button. And this is the render engine control window. And if you're in a busy production environment, you've probably seen these. Um, this is really what gets that printer started. And the render engine 
control window um, is displayed on the computer on which the render engine um, is was either created or has been specified for that render engine. And it's automatically going to populate with my test queue. And I'm simply going to start it. So once I get it started, I'm actually going to leave it running and I'm going to minimize it to get it out of the way. It's showing me that it's idle with a quantity rendered. And for those of you who are on the line who are all familiar with DP2 and are using these tools um, as perhaps a way of thinking about training your own people, there have been a couple of changes in the latest versions of DP2. We now have a shutdown all button, which is very handy. If you had multiple printers running in this window, you could shut down them all at the same time. And when you minimize it, you can see it's down in the lower left-hand corner. We'd simply have to select it to bring it back up. But now that I've got a printer and I have a method for you know, getting some work through DP2, I'm going to go back to Categories. And this time I'm going to go back to Order Entry and then open the product. Because So now what I need to do is tell DP2 when I run something to the printer what size it is, what format. There's many, many different ways that you can use that product to drive work um, either manually as we're going to do it so I can show it to you or automatically through DP2. Um, if you have the test order um, loaded in your in your lab so that you have a test school category, this is a good place to put this kind of a test product and that's where I'm going to work but you could create your own category I've seen that in a lot of labs where there'll be a QA category you know, just so that you have something isolated and you know how to get there fast so I'm going to right click to create a new product this is the create a new product window there's three different ways that you can create a new product from this approach and one is from width and height which is what I'm going to use but you can do them from layered PSD files also you can auto size or create it from the size of the image that you drag into it. The ID has to be unique in the system and DP2 will of course tell you if it's not unique. I'm just going to use my test 8 by 10 In my test school category, which is where I started, even if you didn't start there, you could also just create new product and then choose the category that um, you want to put that in. And you don't have to worry about the master layout directory unless you're actively changing it. Otherwise, you can leave things just the way they are. Create it. Once I've created it, what hap a couple of things happen. The first thing that's um, going to happen is you'll see that it brought up a product images. I'm not going to use these, but I do want to let you know that if your lab uses that product images to keep the backgrounds so that that way you can just drag and drop it onto the background of the layout, which I'm not going to do, but I just want to explain what you're seeing there. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to do my test 8 by 10. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually set it up to go to my printer. This is called the output to disk file. This is the window and I selected the, the output to disk icon for most hot folder application printers, which is essentially what we're doing is sending it to a folder. You're going to use the open the save image dialog box and that's what we're looking at here. So the file type, I'm going to leave it as a JPEG. If I put a resolution here, and DP2 is going to use this resolution first. That's going to look, this is our output specification. This is basically a set of instructions to tell the printer how, you know, what does it look like? What size is it? What shape is it? What special attributes have we given it to? So what color would the text be? And so on. Um, and then I'm going to select my test queue and I'm going to activate it. Now, right now you can see if you look at the bottom of that layout, it says it's an 8 by 10 inch at 100 pixels per inch. And that's the default. It's the starting point. But once I activate this, then it's going to be an 8 by 10 at 400 pixels per inch. This might not be important if it's just an image that's going to go in here, but if you had graphics or artwork, you had other more complex things that you were building in your layout, it's always a good idea to be looking at it in the size in which you're going to be building it rather than 100 pixels per inch, and that way you can check to be sure everything's aligning. Now that I've created my product, I'm going to populate it with a couple of nodes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my 8x10 a full frame 8x10. So I'm going to use the selection tool to select the entire background. You can kind of see my marching ants are going. I'm going to right click and create an image node from selection. So there's my Shirley that lets me know that I have successfully created an image node. If you were just doing an 8x10 and you weren't going to change any of the other attributes, you'd be pretty much done. But in this case, I also give you a text node. The surely in this case, and kind of by default, has a prompt in it so that it'll populate with whatever image you put, you know, kind of into that when you're creating the job, which will be our next step. Um, I'm going to also add a text node. And again, it's a very simple process. Right click. I drew it out. 
creating a text node. And now there are a lot of other things that I could be doing here and a lot of other attributes. And again, I I'm, will save those for another day. I'm going to double click on here and I'm just going to put, you know, sample text, nothing. I just kind of want to give you a sense. What's going to happen is DP2, the text is going to fill the note. Uh, I'm just going to show you a simple, um, I'll just change the color. This is the text note properties. You could, I could have right clicked. I'm using the icons in this case. And I'm going to go to the color in the texture and select text color. And I'm just going to go for red, right? It's bright and it'll stand out. And say OK. And then I'm going to preview it so that now we have that bright red text. So now I'm going to close and save this. So I'm going to say, yep, I have created the product that I need to output to my printer. One thing I didn't do, and I can do it now just to show you, I don't, depends on whether or not I populate the product icons, but if you want to populate the product icons, if you're creating these for other people to use and the visuals are helpful, you can just update the open product icon as you can see down here because that one's open, DP2 will give me a little bit of a thumbnail there. The next step, I've got my printer. I now have a product that I can use. Really now what I need to do is create an order and populate that with a few images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use select order. And I'm going to just type in here, I'm going to say my test order. I'm going to use a one because I think I've used that before. I'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard. The DP2 says it doesn't exist. Now, if you create a test order for yourself, once you've created that test order, and probably many of you already have places that you do test orders. If not, you can create one just like this. I'm going to say, yes, add a new order. And then I'm going to say, yes, I would like to edit it. All of these fields can come into play depending on what type of work you're doing. P2 is a place where you could right click, you can use shortcuts, you can use the buttons. We did it that way on purpose. You can select the, the way that method that works for you and stick to it. There's no reason to change it. If you're happy, and I say this all the time, if you're happy with a particular approach, then that's what you should do with DP2. So now I've got an order and I'm gonna just double click on it. And that's going to open order items and the order images. There's two different pieces that are part of this process that's really kind of moving us right into step four. And that is we have our order images. Now I need some images that are actually part of an order. And in DP2, um, although you can automate around some of this, right, in which case you'd never see these probably in your lab if you're using, you know, online ordering or some sort of order entry system. When you first time you see an order, it's populated with both order items and order images. So this is the right click menu for the images window. And I'm going to go down here just to point it out, the find images to import that. I'm using those, there are shortcut keys and so on, but I'm using those because it allows me to show you what I'm doing. So in this case, I'm simply going to open an Explorer window and I'm just going to grab a few images and drag those onto the order images or the import images window. And it's going to say, would you like to assign those four images to this order? I'm going to say, okay. Once it's imported those images, then I can view them and I can close import images. And I have four images, so I'm almost there. I got a little bit more, one more last step to do to kind of create the environment in which I can fully test this, to create a job. So the job or the order item is that last step between, you know, kind of having something sent to a printer and having an order um, in DP2. So in a manual environment, I'm simply going to take my product and drag it into my order items window. So now I have a product in my order items window, but I actually don't have a job yet because I don't have anything in here. See, if I were to open this now, it would still be Shirley, and I don't want to print Shirley. I mean, you could, but um, so what I want to do now is I want to take my images and I want to create jobs, the combination of that product or that output specification and the images from my order. That's what creates my order items and the job. And of course, now I have four. Uh, we can open those up. As you can see, I've got one for each kid. I didn't, because I didn't, of course she's in red. I didn't do anything special. I see my sample text exactly the way that I created it. So now I've got my four jobs. Point now I want to run them to my printer. I want to see what's going on. Before I do that, let me bring up my printer, right click on them. I'm going to run it. I have three choices here. I can run the selected one, say I only wanted to run a few in a larger order, so I would just select them. I can run all items, order items in this view. We have 
a system or a feature set in DP2 that we refer to as workflow, in which case you would have the order items would open, you know, within each workflow so that that way, say, if you had magnets and you had prints, you could run those together without having to hunt through, you know, hundreds and hundreds of order items, especially in an automated system. Or I can run the entire order, which is what I'm going to do. And it brings up the um, run dialog. And see down here in red, it says print all order items. If I had selected only a few, it would say just print one or two. I'm actually going to go ahead and change it to make sure that I select set so that I'm sure that it's running to my test queue. And then I'm going to go ahead and select run. And essentially now, I've got the whole system. I've done everything I need to do to run work in DP2. I created a printer. I created a product. I created the order and added images and ran my work. And that's the the very simple, you know, getting started in those kind of four basic steps in DP2. Once this is run, I think, so now I'm assuming you can see those. So now I'm going to just go back to my desktop and go back to, did I say printer two? And there you go. So these are the four I just ran. I ran those a little bit earlier. So these are the ones that I just ran, these four. And so I've com kind of completed my test cycle. That's it in a nutshell. Well, with that, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, participate in this DP2 Getting Started in Four Simple Steps. I appreciate your time today. Thank you.